Okay, we are on. So this is an important lecture today, and um, it's you, you guys actually have been really proud of you in terms of how well you've been getting the adding, simplifying, and adding ra radical uh, expressions and stuff. You're actually doing quite well. Um, some of you are doing like incredibly well, and so it's like it's impressive that you're all getting it as well as you are. So. But, but so we've been talking about simplifying radicals and we've been talking about adding or subtracting radicals, right? And then yesterday briefly, I didn't do a lecture, but I talked briefly about multiplying radicals. So we're gonna talk about multiplying radicals a little further today. We're just gonna, since I didn't put it on the film, I'm just gonna do a couple problems so you can see them. And then we're gonna talk about dividing radicals and see how that works. And then you're going to see, then we're going to talk about this last thing, rationalizing the denominator. That's, I'm going to wait on, on that to tell you what that is. But, okay, so for, first of all, we know that um, when we did, uh, let me just be sure everything's on the board, yes. So let's, we, if we knew that like the square root of 48 is the same thing as the square root of 16 times 3, right? So look at that. We just changed... We just put the factors of 48 inside. Now we can also say that that's the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. So you can take any factors of a number that are, that are under the same radical sign. You can take them out, separate them, and put them each under their own radical sign, right? That's kind of important to know. So then, when you do that, then the square root of 16 is 4 times the square root of 3. So that's what you already learned. You already know how to do that. Which means you already know how to do multiplying radicals. Because multiplying radicals, we start at this end and go back this way, right? You already know that the square root of 16 times the square root of 3 is equal to put them both, put them both under the square root sign, right? So it's also equal to 16 times 3 under the same square root sign, right? And that means I can multiply these and get 48, so I can get the square root of 48. Right? Makes sense. Okay? Now, the, the, the one question probably going through people's minds is, yeah, what? this is stupid. Why would I even want to do this? Look, I could, change, I could simplify right now. 4 times the square root of 3. Why would I go back to this? Great question. Did I ask that question? Oh, great question. Brilliant question. No, sorry. Um, so, yeah, why would you, though? In this case, you probably wouldn't do this. But I'll give you a case where you would. Try this. What if I said the square root of 2 times the square root of 6? Oh, yeah. What would that be? Can I, can I simplify this right now? 2. Square root of 2. No, can I simplify this? No, because there's no perfect square. Remember, we're looking for 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. That goes into one of these. It doesn't go into either one of these. You can take 6 into the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, and then you'd have 2 square roots of 3. Right. Do I go that right root first? Well, let me go. We're, uh, we, I'm going to get there. Let me just do something else first. You're totally right. We talked about that yesterday. But... So you can combine, you can actually multiply these. Two times six is what? So I can put them under the same square root sign, two times six, right? And then I can say, well, that's the same as the square root of 12. <gasps> the square root of 12, though, does have a perfect square in it, right? It has four that goes in it. Suddenly, here, it didn't. But once we multiply it out, suddenly we can. So now we can go further. We can say, well, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which is now 2 times the square root of 3. So we just simplified that, right? Right? Is that clear? <coughs> All right. Now, Sal brought up another concept. So yes, we could just do this. Multiply 2 times 6, get 12, and then simplify. But Sal thought, well, wait a minute. Why don't we simplify as we go along? We know, we're going to use the same one, we know this is the square root of 2, right? Now, we also know that there's a, we could have, this is the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. So I'm going to write it like that, square root of 2 
times the square root of 3, because that's what 6 is, right? And whenever you have two of the same things under a square root sign being multiplied, it equals that thing that's underneath the square root sign. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. It's not the square root of 2. It's the square root of 4, right? But what's the square root of 4? 2. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2, right? So whenever you have that, it's going to be just, so that equals 2 times the square root of 3. Look, in one step, we got the answer, whereas this took me several steps, Whew. right? Sometimes this doesn't work, though. I mean, sometimes you can't go much further, but usually if you can simplify this, then usually you can simplify that. Probably always, right? I guess always you could. Right? If you can simplify this, then you can probably simplify that. So, um, so let's try a few using that method for a second. Let's say we did um, um, like the square root of 2 times the square root of 12. All right. So we could do the square root of 24. We did this already? Yes, no. but it was not very well. OK, well, we'll do it again since I wrote it down. OK, so we could do. Let's see, 12 would be 2 times 6, right? Yeah. So let's do, okay, so, so we've got the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 again times the square root of 6. Which is the square root of 2. Which is the square root of 2 times 3, right? But if I do that, I notice this is a pair. As soon as I see a pair, that tells me I'm going to have 2 times the square root of 6, right? That comes out as a 2. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Times the square root of 6. Now, I could break the square root of 6 down further, but let me ask you, can I really simplify the square root of 6? It's a small number, so you can usually figure it out. Does 4, 9, 16, 25, whatever, go into 6? No. no. So I can't go any further. I could say 2 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, but that's not going to help me. So I'm gonna, I want the 2 times 3 back into the 6. You see what I'm saying? Does it see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, I could write this. I could go further. I'm not suggesting you do this, but you could do this. You could say, oh, well, that could be 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. But those don't have, there's no, those aren't perfect squares. I can't simplify those. So which seems simpler to you? This or this? The top one. The top one, right? One. Yeah, get out of here, Nathan. All right. Um, you <laughs> it. You lose, <laughs> right? You, the idea with math is always put something in its simplest form, right? So simple, simple. You don't want the square, you know, 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. You want just 2 times the square root of 6. You want to keep it simple, right? So once you get to the point where it can't be simplified, it just stays there. You multiply those things out and it stays there. All right, so. Okay, can I erase? Yeah. yeah. So that so so that was that's pretty okay. Let's try another. Let's try um, let's try two times the square root of fifteen. Two times what? Three times the square root of fifteen. Okay, so th the square root of three times the square root of fifteen. Did we? Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. So we got the square root of three, and then what's that going to be? Yeah, that's going to be the square root of three times the square root of five, right? So what does that give me? That's my answer. Square root of five. Does everybody agree? Three square root of five. It's pretty easy, right? What? Oh, okay, okay. I can see. This is how it's going to be, huh? Okay, I can see. It's going to be a troublemaker. Okay, so um, that's all there is to multiplying. That's all there is to multiplying. It's really easy. It's al you already have been doing it and without even realizing it, right? So you guys know how to do it. Fist to five on multiplying. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Fabulous. Okay, great. All right. So now we're going to talk about dividing. Yeah. All right. So dividing is very similar. The same rules apply. Let's, let's, let me just show you the rule, how the rules 
are really kind of the same thing. Okay, I'm talking, you guys. Okay. Oh. All right, same rule. All right. All right, so here we go. If, if, if I said the square root of uh, 2 times the square root of 3 is the same as the square root of 2 times 3, what if I did this? What if I said the square root of 2 over the square root of 3? When you multiply them and they're out, they, they each have their own square root sign, you can put them both in the square root sign and still multiply them. Same thing with division. They're both separate, right? The numerator is in its own square root sign. Yeah. The denominator is in its own square root sign. I can do this. That's the same thing as saying the square root of two thirds. Mm. Wait, what? Right? I can write a very tall square root sign and then put that fraction in there. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes, this is really useful to know because sometimes it's easier to have it like this. And sometimes it's easier to have it like this. And you'll see, I'll give you, I'll try to think of an example. Um, so let's try a few. Let's, let, let's just sort of see how this would work. What if I gave you, um, let's see. What if I gave you, um, um, Can't use that one. <laughs> Arr. Okay, hang on one Why? second. Um, so, what if I gave you the um, square root of eight over the square root of two? So, I could simplify this first. There's two ways I could do it. I could do it two ways. In fact, I'll do it both ways, <coughs> so you can see. But. Um, the first way would be, you know, you might think, oh, well, I can simplify this. What goes into 8? Um, four. 4, right? That's this purpose. So we could say the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 all over the square root of 2, right? Oh, ah, look, what about the square root of 2s? They could cross out, right? Mm -hmm. Right? I don't know. And then square root of 4 is? 4. four. Two. 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 <laughs> okay, 2. All right, so that wasn't so hard. That fist of five. Do you get that? Do you understand that method? Mm -hmm. Okay. What? All right. All right. Uh, do you have a question, Amy, or a comment? Yeah. So, like, what if it's like mixed, like square root of two over four or something? How would you do that? Okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. Good question. Good question. Let me finish this first. So, the square root of eight. Now. Using that other method, the other method is we can put them both under the same square root sign, right? Watch this. The square root of 8 over 2, right? Write this down. Write this down on your notes. Wait, is this the other way? This is the other method. Same thing. Two ways. If we have two ways you could do it. You oh. could simplify each one separately and then cross things out. Or you could put it under the same square root sign. And immediately I see, well, that's the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Either way. Yeah. They, all, they both work. Yeah. So fractions are really quite simple, too. Wait, so you just divide the... 8 divided by 2 is 4, so square root of 4. Right? See what I mean? Yeah. Um, all right, so now, now Amy had a question. Let me just think about an example that would be... Um, Wait, so question? she said, okay, so this was another, she was saying, well, what if you had the square root of, say, 32 over 4? All right. So, so I cannot put them both under the square root sign, right? Because the 4 is not under a square root sign. So it means I have to only deal with the numerator and simplify that. Go ahead, Amy. I don't know how to do it. Okay, so. So help um, me. So you change the square root of 32 to the square root of 16 times okay. the square root of 2. Yes. So, and then the square root of 16 is 4. Right. So that would be 4 square root of 2 over 4. So guys, write these down in your notes. Right. So cross the 4s out. So cross the 4s out. And then it's square root of 2. So it's just the square root of 2. 
Isn't that amazing that that complicated thing is really all it is is square to two? I yep. think that's amazing. What if the, the four was a five? Today. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> this is a lecture. I'm on. People all over the world are seeing me, and you're trying to trip me, right? Okay, we'll try. Let's say it's five. All right, let's say. Let's, let's say it's five. <laughs> okay, but if this had been five, what would it be? If that, if we had the square root of 32 over five, it would still be this, four right? Four square, square root of two over five. Over five. That's it. Whoa! Well, see that? Oh, it's see pretty that? easy. It really isn't hard, right? So fist to five. You're getting it. Okay. Good. 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 All right. So now. They're going to do something Wait, wait. What, is, what did we do for that one again? Which one? This the, one? Yeah. So all we did is we said, well, since the numerator and the denominator are both under their own what square root sign, science? I can put them both under one square root sign. Right? And every fraction is a division problem. That means 8 divided oh. by 2. If, it, what, if the 2 was 3, would that, would that be a <laughs> that Here? Yeah. Would that and be as simple as it Yeah, so then, yeah, exactly. You'd have to just 8 over, the square root of 8 over 3. Yeah. However, well, there's actually more to the answer, because that's where we're going next, which is talking about what is rationalizing the de denominator. And this is, this is the part that people tend to short circuit on in their brain. Like, they tend to get this stuff okay, right? But this next step is where I have found most people like, oh my god, and it's so simple. Okay, but this is all stems, the ration, so now we're moving on to rationalizing the denominator. Okay? There is a rule in algebra. There is this rule that says, you know, I don't know what it's called, but it's, called, it's a rule. And it says, never ever, 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 leave a radical in the denominator. You know this rule? Oh, I put an extra ever. Oh, shoot. That's definitely oh. wrong. <laughs> okay. Never, ever, ever, ever leave. Sounds like a math textbook, right? It's what you read in a math textbook. Never, ever, 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 ever. You should, right? put, you should put never, ever, ever, never leave. That's true, I should, but I didn't. Okay. Um, but let's think about that for a second. What does that mean? Holy smokes. So, so yeah, that's what it means. How did you know? Ted, that's amazing. That's brilliant. <laughs> Right, so let's say you have, we're going to start simple, and we're going to start getting harder and harder. Um, let's say you have the square root of 2 over the square root of 3. Now, and let's say we did a comp, comp, computations, and that was our final answer. Oh my. But then we remembered this rule, never, ever, 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 ever leave. A radical sign in the denominator. Is there a radical sign in the denominator? Yes. yes. Oh my God. Oh no. What are we gonna do? We're gonna move it upstairs and make it exponent negative. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that, but that's a really that would work. That's interesting. The only trouble is that there's also another rule about exponents. Never, ever, 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 ever leave uh, your answer with a negative exponent, right? Which means we'd have to flip it back down again. So it was a good idea. It worked for a while, for a short term. But it didn't quite, didn't quite work all the way. So what could we do? This is where you. This is where you guys use use your brains for a second. Think about it. What could you multiply? Oh, wait. What could you multiply? Multiply by the square root of three. Yeah. No. Square root of 
Multiply what times the square root of 3? Oh, multiply by the, 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 the opposite. Negative 3 over 2. The, the square root of 3 over the square root of Now remember, two. we don't have an equal sign. We don't have an equal sign. So we don't have, like, you know, there's that rule. By its what? What's that? Yeah, remember, we can't change, we're, we cannot change the value of this fraction. Right? No, we, can, we can change the way it looks, but we cannot change its value. Now, in a normal, if you have an equation, you can change the value of each side. But you have to do the same thing to both sides. If you're going to add 5 to this side, you have to add 5 to this side. If you're going to multiply this side times its reciprocal, oh, yeah. you've got to multiply the other side times reciprocal because you are changing the value of that side by doing it, right? You're changing the value of this side, right? But we have no equal sign here. We no have, have no equation. So whatever we multiply this by, it has to be, um, it has to not change the value of this fraction. Ah, no wait. So what if... <laughs> well, I've been hearing people say reciprocal and and I, and I heard some people say just the square root of 3, and I just want, I was clarifying. So, you're right. So, if we multiply this times the value of 1, we wouldn't change its value, right? So, let's multiply it times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. You're right. Sorry, I didn't hear everybody saying that. I heard a lot of people not saying that to be actually true. So, but some of no, you said yeah, that's good. They're like all like multiply it by. All right, sorry. Yeah. But I heard multiply it by the square root of three, not square root of three over square root of three. That's well, different, right? So, so now we have what do we have in the numerator? Six. Square root of six over what do we have in the denominator? Nine. Three. Three. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> so we now we're done. Look how easy ah, that was. Ah, that was so ah, ah. easy. Oh, easy. I mean, rationalizing the denominator is so easy. Yes, Amy. Um, are there like exponents with radicals? Yes, actually, they will get you will, in algebra two. You will be doing very complicated things. But remember, I said the square root of x is the same as x to the one half power. Yeah. Right. The cube root. The cube root of twenty-seven is equal to 27 to the 1 third power. I mean like 27 to like the square root of 3 power. Is that what it is? So you can oh, um, uh, uh, I'm sure you can. I just I'm trying to think of how you'd use that, but I haven't I have not had to use that. That's a good question. I'm sure you can. I mean, you know, you may you may invent a reason for doing that, right? That could be your thing. You could be famous. We could use the Amy principle, right? All right, so let's try a few. Let's try a few of these. These are really, really important, and I'm gonna, they're going to get harder, and you're going to see suddenly why they're getting harder, okay? But we'll start simple first. Square root of um, 14 over the square root of 6. What would I multiply this by? Everybody, all at once. All right. The square root of six over the square root of six. You all see that that means that equals one, right? We're not changing its value. That's the trick with fractions. If you don't have an equal sign. So we got. All right, but wait a minute. What did you get? Okay, so square some root of six, square root of 84 over 6. So I'm going to actually do some, okay, Sample over 6. Now, Sample I would have thought of it like this, though. This, I'm, I just want you to see how I would have done this. I would have done square root of 14 over the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 over the square root of 6. That's what it is. Equals, I agree with the 6 on the bottom. This is what I would do. I would ask myself, is there a number a factor of 6 that is also a factor of 14. 2. two. two. All right. So this is the Three. square root of 2 times the square root of 7, right? Seven. Yeah. Square root of 2 times the square root of 7. And then this is the square root of 2 times the square root of 3, right? 
Wait, so that's two square root of two. Uh, square root of two times the square root of seven. Square root of two times the square root of six. Three. Two that's six. Wait, where did he get two and three? That's how you equal six. Two times three equals oh, six. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Two times seven equals 14. Uh, yeah. So look, we have two. We have square root of twos twice. We have a square root of two here and a square root of two here. So that becomes two. And now, can I simplify seven? Can I simplify thirteen? Three. Three times seven is twenty-one. So it's twenty-two square root of twenty-one over six. I might just check really fast. Does do any of these go into twenty-one? No. no. So but I can't go any further. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we got the same answer. Kind of. Well, no. Well, yes. now we have to simplify well, that's, this that's one. That's four times eighty. Right? That's four times twenty-one is eighty-four, and then that's. Ah, okay. There we go. Four square four times the square root of twenty-one over six. So that's <laughs> two, square two square root, root of. 21. 21 over 6. Yeah, got the same thing. All right, so now we're going to make it a little harder, okay? This is where, don't erase it, I'm sorry. Who said don't? Right there. Oh, you said don't, okay. Did I erase too much already? No. Okay. Gary, you know how you said my fours look like three ones? That looks like a four. Like the 21 next to the Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the way Kala writes her fours. I used to. Isn't that weird? Oh, that's like, oh, that's so cool. I'd be, I'd be going to crack grading everybody's papers and stuff, and I come to Kala's and, you know, 21 this, 21 that, 21. I finally realized, wait, that's a four. Uh -huh. That's all. Oh, oh, thanks. I'm blind. Right? That's how she writes her, Gary's her four. Gary's 21. Those are fours. Like 21. Can I erase? Like and then it's no. not even connected. Oh, Gary's 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 Gary's
Okay, so Indu Indu's suggesting that we multiply top and bottom by two times the square root of five, right? Yes. But I guess That's we multiply by square root of five. Why? Because because if we multiply it by the square root of five, oh wait, that would be weird. No, you're right. You're right. So what is the problem in the denominator? Is it the two? No, it's the square root of five. It's the square root of five. It's the stupid five that's in the way. So you only multiply it. You don't make You keep multiply it simple. Keep it simple. Kiss. Keep it simple silly, right? What? What? Kiss. K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple silly. Keep it simple silly. Right? Kiss. Right? All right. Oops, not equals, sorry. Times. Times. So the only thing that's the problem is the square root of 5. So you are going to just get rid of that. So we're going to do the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. So what does that give me? Square root of 35 on top. And on the bottom I have 2 times 5, which is 10. Right? Does that make sense? Wait. We get that, Sakara, how we did it? Oh, okay. Two times, these two equal five. Square root of five times square root of five is five. Two times five is ten. Oh. Okay? Right? Now give us the homework. Yeah. Alright, wait. Wait, now I'm going to get harder. No, no. Oh. Okay. okay. What time is it? Okay. We're fine. Right. Good. This is easy. <laughs> you, have, you have any idea how many people struggle with this? I don't know why. We're so, not so struggling though. I know, I'm so impressed. So then move on. On. Oh, why? You want to finish it before the end of class? Yes. Oh. yes. Right, we got one more. Or maybe oh, at, least, at least one more. Hang on. Oh, ah. Alright. All right, square root of 4 over the square root of 48. <laughs> so guys, this is the time to really start to pay attention, okay? This is where people really short circuit. Is this on the homework? I can't remember. I, I, doubt, I, I doubt if I put this, in this hard in the homework because I'm just trying to get you to get good at it first. But... If <laughs> that's because the eighth grade class changed to my two days in a row, I had to change my scheduled class for them. All right, so the square root of four over the square root of forty-eight. So a lot of people would immediately say, multiply the top and bottom by the square root of forty-eight. No, 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 no. Not a good idea because four times forty-eight is kind of a lot, and then suddenly I've got a big number and I have to simplify it. I don't really want to do that. So Amy. Amy, I did it. Tell me. So this is what you do. So wait, wait. Everybody should be listening. We do square root of 4 over 48 is 4 times 12. So square root of 40, um, square root of 4 times 12. Well, no, square root of 4 times square root of 12. Okay, so wait, 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 wait. Let me do this. Square root of 4 over the square root of 4 times the square root of 12, right? So now what? Oh, those are the same thing. I can cross them out. So that Wait, gives me one over the square root of 12. We're done. Yeah. No. Oh. No. oh, shoot. Never, ever, 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 ever Never. leave a radical in the denominator. I got it. I did it. Okay, it now, equals, ideas. Equals the square root of me, me. Okay, Sal. <laughs> okay. So everybody, everyone, everybody <laughs> listen to Sal. Okay, simplify 48 into 16 to the square, six, the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. What? Okay, so you, okay. Huh? Does anyone want to keep going here, though? Yeah. First? Yeah. 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 This is okay. I mean, this is fine. We just have to go one step. Let's finish this, and then we'll go and to your you way. Got it. <laughs> and then you do uh, equals 1 over 4, square root of 4. Right. So what we want to do is simplify. And then. So, guys, we want to simplify this. Is it snowing or something? Snow. Oh, oh, that's snow. Snow. No, it stops snowing. There's okay. Oh. And then, okay. so go. So remember, we don't want this, we don't want it, it's going to have to be simplified eventually, right? We can't leave our answer unsimplified, even if it, even if it has no, no radical in the denominator. It's got to be simplified. So let's simplify it now. So, so go ahead. Sal, so you said that's the same. 1 over 
of her, the square, square root of four. four. Right, I'll just write it down. Square root of four times, times the square root of three, which is equal to one right. over so two, two square root of three. three. And then you multiply it by square, square now, root of three. Now, it's only the square root of three that's the problem. So we're going to multiply that times, the square root of 3, over the square root of 3. And when we do that, we get the square root of 3 on top. And we have 2 times 3, which is 6. Yeah, that's what I got. And so that's our answer. Right? Now, there's lots of ways you could have done this. Like Sal suggested, well, we could make this the square root of 16 times the square root of 3. Right? And then 4, and then 2. Four and two and then I out and then I right. And then you would have gotten... No, this no, I just got to that 2 times squared 2. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's lots of ways you could have done it. Yeah. The key, though, is you've got to simplify anyway. So don't go, don't go to this. Don't make this mistake of going square root of 48 over the square root of 48 and multiply it. You know? Simplify it first. Because it's wrong if you give it to me without, I mean, even if you give it to me with no radical denominator, but it hasn't been simplified, it's wrong, right? I have, I'm, I'm also asking you to give me the simplified version. So, um, all right, so I think, oh shoot, there was one other thing I didn't cover. No, you covered everything. So that's rationalizing. Fist to five, do you understand it? Five, five, five. Okay, oh, good. Gary, yes. If you actually did multiply it by um, square root of 48, it would, uh, um, like it would be. Um, it wouldn't be that hard. 48, no. 192. Right, so then you'd have to simplify 192, right? But, um, all right, last thing. I'm, I'm jumping backwards to one thing. I just remembered something that's on the homework that I didn't teach. Last thing. Now we're going back to the first part, multiplying. Okay, last thing. What if I gave you this? The square root of 2 times... Uh, 48. I mean, I mean, it's 2, 2, 6. <laughs> what? All right. This is a distributive property one, right? Oh, but you guys know how to do this. All it involves is using what you already know. You already know this. So you're just going to distribute this to this and this to this, and you're going to use multiply, right? So it's something you already know how to do. So somebody new, somebody who hasn't said anything. Uh, cream. So cream, what is the square root of 2? times 4. Yes. So it would be 4. You always write the number first and then the square root second, right? Square root of 2. All right, now I've got a plus sign. I'm going to put my plus sign there. Okay, cream. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is? 2 is 2. 2, okay. Now we're done. That's it. There's nothing else. These are not like terms. I can't say now that that is 6 square root of 2. Or four square root of four. I can't, you know, you can't combine these, right? You see, what I mean? all I did was that, and then plus that, right? Pretty straightforward. Now sometimes though, yeah. Wait, no, um, wait, Okay. So sometimes you get this though, where you do have to simplify afterwards. Let's say you had. Uh, the square root of 2 times the square root of 20 plus um, the square root of 24. Now, I can't add these, right? I cannot add those because those are not this like terms. I can't say that that is not the square root of, that is not the square root of 44, right? That is not the square root of 44, right? Right? You get that? Okay. Oh, yeah. Right? We'd have to simplify if we were going to add them, but I don't want to do that. I want to do this first. So, boom, boom. Okay. So, uh, Juliana, help me. Square root of 2 times the square root of 20. Square root of 48. 20 times 2. Yeah, that's fine. So, we'll just write the square root of 40. And then plus, okay, square root of 2 times the square root of 24. 48. Okay, square root of 48. 
All right, now, can I just say I'm done? No. Why? I have to simplify them and see. Maybe I will have like terms. If I do, then I can add them, right? Maybe I won't. But Right, so that's going to be, one of these goes into 40. Four. four. So square root of 4 times the square root of 10 plus, what, which of these goes into 48? 16. Square root of 16 times the square root of 3. So I have 2 square root of 10 plus 4 square root of 3. It doesn't work. Okay, so that's my final answer. Because I don't have like terms, the square root of 10 and the square root of 3. Right? So if you knew that they wouldn't be like terms, could you just go find the square root of 3? Leave it like that. Um, I would say no for now, because right now the, the practice is to get it from, to write it in simplest form. Right? That's a good question. All right, so I'm going to give the homework. Oh. You guys can finish.